and welcome to tonight's episode of Life Support, the only lifestyle show dedicated to styling the life you actually live. By placing the bar at a comfortable height. Tonight, I'll be demoing an outrageously easy way to get some home maintenance done. I'm going to show you blokes how you can keep more money in your wallet simply by making the wallet you keep it in. I'll be enlightening all you aspiring modern women on how to become your man's very best friend. And in my family health segment, I'll be prescribing a clever cover-up idea for all you young women who are keen to conceal your skin complaints. Oh, that sounds like an awful lot to get through in just half an hour. Yeah, so that's enough with the counting down to ignition. Let's take off. What? Oh, g'day. Helmets are daggy and uncomfortable. They're supposed to protect you in a fall, but if you're like me, you're not going to have a fall. So why have I got one on? Because I cop a hundred dollar fine if I don't. However, there's a way to get out of it, and today, Todd's going to show you how. It's all about making it look like you're wearing a helmet without the restriction and discomfort of actually having one on. I want you to make my hair look like I'm always wearing this helmet. Now you might be wondering, what about this black strap around my chin? Well, that's why I'm wearing this three day growth. I'm gonna get the hairdresser to shave a thin band all the way around and dye it black. It's gonna look great. Oh, good one, Dirk. What a stunning resemblance. Even up close, it looks like I'm wearing a helmet. So there you have it. Take a tip from Todd. Ask your barber for a bicycle bouffant and give the pedal police a big miss. Yeah, right. Something we modern women don't like to talk about is that time of the month. And something we like talking about even less is having sex during that time of the month. But did you know that one of the best things you can do to relieve period pain and stress is have sex? That's right, having sex can make you feel much better. But of course there's the problem of the mess. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to deal with that in style. In recent years, Asian style has become very, very popular. There's something about the clean, sleek lines and elegant simplicity that appeals to today's minimalist trends. The Asian style folding screens lend a serene sense of beauty. Very sexy. These bedside tables are simple yet strong in their impact. The futon style bed is clean yet striking. The low height creates a feeling of space in the room. And of course, our Japanese flag bed spread. White with a red circle in the middle the elegant white made passionate with the splash of red. And quite simply, the perfect bed spread for sex during that time of the month. All you have to remember is to position yourself carefully. So girls, don't let that time of the month stop you from having what you want. Just go Japanese and let the rising sun provide you with the perfect place to make love. off with the amount of junk mail clogging your letterbox? Credit card applications, discount junk food, real estate calendars? Personally, I don't like the stuff. And even if you have a no junk mail sticker on your letterbox, a lot of this stuff's got your name and address on it, so the postie still has to deliver it. This is how I deal with the problem. Simply get a reply paid envelope from an unsolicited credit card application and fill it with your unwanted junk mail. Who knows? When the bank wants to celebrate another year's multi-billion dollar profits, the three bucks you can save them on a pizza or bucket of chicken might be useful. Not to mention this handy real estate calendar, which might be used to mark off the date when the chief executive receives his golden handshake. It's even got a phone number on it in case he wants to buy the suburb you live in. So there you go. Give junk mailers a message they've already paid for. Just don't supply a return address. See ya. Well, Dr Rudy, here we are, three weeks into Series 3, and, well, so much is happening this year. That's right, Dot. So, uh, 
What do you think of the new do? Pardon? Well, I've had my hair cut. Couldn't you tell? Yes, I noticed. But my mother, always a stickler when it comes to manners, taught us if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I continue to live by that to this day. Yeah, fair enough. So what's coming up next? Oh, don't, don't be like that. No, I'm not being like anything. I just think we should move on before things get awkward. Ah, speaking of which, Sigourney's next segment is all about avoiding awkward moments. I'll let it go, man. Oh no. Oh, this is so awkward. See that girl who just walked in? I went to university with her. I think I borrowed her diaphragm once. Anyway, I can't for the life of me remember what her name is. Don't you just hate these difficult situations? I'll never get away with pretending I don't know her. And she'll be offended if she thinks I can't remember who she is. Fortunately, I know a third way that's guaranteed to avoid awkward situations. All you have to do is use a general form of address. Watch. Sigourney! You bitch! See? No need for awkward, embarrassing reintroductions. And whilst I may have temporarily bruised her face, at least I didn't permanently bruise her ego by letting on I didn't have a clue what her name was. Crisis averted. Yeah, g'day. Storage. It's probably the greatest problem facing the average Australian man. If you're like me, you've built the shed, put stuff under the house, built the extension, maybe even gone up another story, and yet there's still nowhere to keep your lawnmower collection. Well, don't worry, there is a solution. All you have to do is build yourself one of these, out the front of your house on the nature strip for easy access. Your neighbours and council will never suspect a thing. However, it's a good idea to restrict your access to the storage to late nights and early mornings, just in case. And there you have it. Now you can accumulate as much stuff as you want. And hey, even if you do run out of room, there's nothing stopping you putting another one down the road. Yeah, right. How's it? Dr. Rudy here, huh? and today I'm going to let you in on some simple biochemical facts. If you're an athlete or amateur sportsman, you've probably encountered these energy foods. And if you lead an active lifestyle, i.e. you're hungover all the time, you've probably encountered these energy drinks. And as a medical man, I can tell you there's something all these products have in common. They're expensive. And there's something else they all have in common. They all contain lots of sugar. Sometimes complex sugars, but most often simple sugars. Now, do you know what else contains sugar? I'll tell you. Sugar contains sugar. And whereas a tiddly can of energy drink costs $4 and a tiny energy bar 3 you can buy an entire kilo of pure, natural, made in Australia energy food for less than a dollar. And you know what? It's 100% fat free. Mm. So just because your body is buff doesn't mean you can't use your brain. Next time you need a pick-me-up, eat some sugar. So just think, with all the money you save on those expensive energy foods, you can treat yourself to some expensive Nike sportswear. Bye now. Hang on a sec. These days, with all the advanced car security available, it's getting harder and harder to steal cars. Oh, got it. I mean, it's still possible. It just takes a little longer and requires a bit more effort. All this for just one car? I don't know if it's worth it. Come on. Next time you need to do a job, don't even bother with one of these. Get yourself one of these. Not just any old truck, though. 11 cars for the effort of one. If you're going to take the risk, you might as well make it worth your while. And it's not just the multiple cars that are the benefit. Check them out. They're all brand spanking new. One job a year is all you'll have to do. 
สียงว่าล่ะดร์รูดี้ฉันต้องบอกว่าเราได้รับการตอบรับจากคุณภาพของคุณลูกและเกือบทุกอย่างของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาไม่มีอะไรที่ทำให้เราสุขมากที่สุดเท่าที่เราได้รับการตอบรับจากคุณภาพของคุณลูกและเกือบทุกอย่างของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับจากการสนับสนุนของพวกเขาได้รับการตอบรับ Dear life support, love the show, etc., etc. Penny is a wonder, and so on and so on. Ah, here's the bit. And finally, a special message for Dr. Rudy. Dr. Rudy, you may think a new face will free you from your past, but photographs don't lie. If I don't hear from you soon, I'll be in contact with either you or Woman's Day. It's up to you. Signed, you know who. What's all this about? I think somebody's having a lend of me and you. I have nothing to hide. Let me look at that. Written by a woman, I'd say, from the stationery and excellent penmanship. It's nice to see the art of letter writing isn't extinct. But who? Undoubtedly, some shameless hussy. But don't worry, Dr. Rudy. I'll help you get to the bottom of this. Right now, I think we should move on. I quite agree. Yeah, all right. Sometimes it does you good to do something good for your folks, and here's a quickie that'll earn you maximum points for minimum pain. Chances are their fence needs sprucing up. After all, it is the part of the property most exposed to the public. Now you could hire a professional painter, but that would mean waving goodbye to a surprising amount of cash. You could do it yourself, but you'd probably screw it up. And besides, you'd still have to shell out for the paint. Well. Here's a way to get their fence professionally painted for free. All you need is one of these and the cover of darkness. All right, I know what you're thinking. Ah, oh, Penny's going to paint graffiti on her parents' fence and get the council to repaint it for free. Well, 20 years ago that would have worked. These days, graffiti's no big deal. I mean, eventually the council would come round and repaint it, but you'd be waiting for like six months. So I'm adding something a little extra: racial slurs. As you can see, I've gone for some classic anti-Semitic slurs, but any slur-sensitive racial minority will do. With this kind of hateful vilification on your wall, I guarantee you the council painters will be round by lunchtime doing a great job for Nicks. So there you go. If you want to keep the folks on side and keep your inheritance up to scratch. Get some free home maintenance done with the potent power of racial vilification. See ya. These days, modern women don't just want to be a wife to their husband; they want to be his best friend too, and it's a good tactic. If you're his best friend, then he'll want to stay home with you instead of hanging out with his friend Beer at the local pub. So today, I'm going to show you how it's done. Simply model your behaviour on a dog. After all, dogs have been man's best friend for over 5,000 years, so they must be doing something right. Which is why it's important for every modern woman to learn a few easy techniques to keep her man happy by adopting the behaviour of a faithful canine. For a start, the first thing you'll notice about dogs is they don't talk. They bark occasionally, but can be trained to shut up on command. Men really like this, so try it at home. Dogs always rush to the door and lick their master whenever he comes home. It makes a man forget about his bad day at work and feel appreciated. So why not give it a go next time your man opens the front door? Hey Max, sit, sit. Yeah, good dog. Obedience. It really turns men on. Dogs will sit, lie down, and play dead upon instruction. Your man will love it if you do this in the bedroom. Now, isn't this a touching domestic scene? Dogs will lie at their master's feet for hours at a time, waiting until he wants to do something. Never once complaining that he hogs the remote control. And that's all there is to it. If you want to be your man's best friend, then model your behaviour on every man's best friend: the dog. After all, dogs have been getting men to love them unconditionally for thousands of years, and they smell and have a lot of body hair, so it can't be too hard. Even for feminists.
Well, coming from our cultural background, I yeah, think so. Yeah, you'd have so. to be obedient. Yeah. Only because they think that they're the man and you'd have to follow by their rules, sort of, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Thomas. I stick up for myself, exactly. You know, you want to know your partner and her feelings and whatever. But uh, once you get married and, you know, she's there as your wife, I think her talking gets a little too much for you. Uh, you know, her responsibility in the house is the type of man I'm looking for. Actually, it's not a matter of obedience or a matter of slavery. It's a matter of understanding, you know. See, their view of women is to cook and clean and stay home. But in my case, if they don't work, they're useless bastards. If you get what I mean. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. And today I'll be dispensing some direction from the dermatology department. Yasmin here has a date tonight with a boy she really quite fancies. After waiting weeks for him to ask her out, the nuts arrived, but her usually perfect skin is betrayed her by breaking out in a blemish. Now, don't you worry, because there is something we can do so your date won't be distracted by it. Now, if you don't want him to stare at your pustule, you have to give him something else to stare at. And you can do this by taking a burns victim along on the date. Next to this scorched skin, even elephant hearted look like alabaster, so he'll never notice your insignificant inflammatory imperfection. Now you can easily befriend a burns victim by doing volunteer work at your local hospital burns ward. You'll find most are heavily stocked thanks to terrorist attacks, increased incidents of arson and the occasional case of friendly fire. So that's all there is to it. If you follow my advice, I guarantee that by the second date, you'll only have eyes for you. Bye now. Hey Penny, tell me, what did you think about that strange message to Dr Rudy in that viewer's letter? If it's to Dr Rudy, I'm pretty rock solid with the fact that I don't care. I find that very hard to believe, Penny. What, not even just a little bit? <laughs> so what? So the good doctor has an interesting past. Doesn't surprise me for a mo that someone would want to try out a bit of blackmail on a major media medico. What blackmail? No one asked for anything. Give it time. I reckon this is just the beginning. I think you'll find there's a lot more to our dedicated doctor than we've seen so far. Big time. Now hang on a minute, Missy. I think you've been quite hard on Dr. Rudy or considered. Considering what exactly? Considering he's a very hard-working and talented medical man. It'd be unfair if some gold digger splashed his private life all over the tabloid press. Hey, listen, we could all do with a bit of a publicity splash over the tabloids. Or anywhere else. I guess. But I'm still worried about Dr. Rudy. Oh, well, while you're doing that, some of our viewers need help with real worries. Look at this. Once you've been with your lady friend long enough, and especially if you're married, an unwritten law is created. The law makes it a woman's prerogative to take money freely from a bloke's wallet. Any man who obstructs this law is branded a cheapskate who doesn't provide. As you can imagine, a man can very quickly run out of money. Now there's only one way to get around this law, and it's to get your woman to voluntarily leave your wallet alone. And today, Todd's going to show you how. This is a racing form guide. Now for some curious reason unknown to man, a woman will never pick up this section of the newspaper. So, you don't want your woman to touch your wallet, and you know she won't touch the form guide, so it makes perfect sense to make your wallet out of the form guide. And all it takes is some simple money saving origami. Firstly, fold it up almost to the top like this. And this goes like this, and this bit goes here. Now, make a three inch fold, then this flap goes over here, and make one more fold, and voila. Now, the money goes in here, and this flap folds over to stop anything falling out. And there you have it, a form guide wallet that'll save you tons of money. Now let's see if it works.
works like a charm. And with all the cash you've saved, you can put on a few bets. An ancient problem for the modern woman is, how do you get your house guests to leave after you've had enough of them? The problem with most guest rooms like this is they're far too warm and inviting. So the solution is simple. Redecorating. To start with, repaint the walls remembering to use cool colours like this duck egg green. Then furnish the room with a stainless steel bed, hang some appropriate prints, then attach a small television to a bracket on the wall and tune the set so it has a truly terrible picture. Finally, and most importantly, make sure the room is heavily scented. Mmm, disinfectant. With a few simple modifications, your guest room now resembles the kind of room that nobody wants to stay in for too long. So there you have it. If you don't want your lodges to linger longer, then decorate with hospital decor and they'll discharge themselves before time, every time. Well, I simply can't believe it. Here we are at the conclusion of yet another episode. As good a reason as any to make Puppin' worse. My words are gone. Yes, truth, that sounds exotic. Yes, it's South African Boerworth sausage with pap. What the hell is pap? It's a maize pottage. I really can't believe it. Puppin' worse is my absolute favourite. Not a coincidence. A quick call to your mother and, well, here we are. I thought you could do with some comforting during this emotional time. Oh, please. Well, I really am quite chuffed. A little biltong to chew on and I'd feel like I was home. Anything for you, Dr. Rudy. Right. On that note, I think it's time we signed off. Yeah, so make sure you join us next week when we deliver an episode I'm particularly proud of. And remember to keep raging against want. <laughs> Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.